and not by sight. Lord, I just pray today as a vessel of clay, as I decrease and you increase in me, help me to convey the word that you've written on the tablets of my heart. Help me to speak it to your people, Lord, that they may receive it, apply it, and this word may become engrafted into their heart and anchor within their souls so that they can walk and live by faith, which is pleasing in your sight. Holy Spirit, you know you have rain in this house, for this is your house. I will not grieve you nor quit you in any kind of way. For Lord, I've laid down my life to be submitted to you, Lord, which puts us all in a position where we submit our lives, therefore, to you, Lord. Then are we able to resist the devil, the strategies, the schemes, the methods, the wiles. That he tries to easily entangle us by luring us and, and leading us astray. And so, Father, I thank you right now that none of the works of darkness shall by any means harm any of us. As I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you praise. It is in the mighty and righteous name of Jesus Christ, and I pray let the people of God say amen. Come on, let's give the Lord. You're only being persecuted because of the word's sake. 
Because the word of God is, is, is what the enemy is after. He's after to steal the word. He does not want you to develop and have confidence in trusting God. He wants you to continue to live a life submitted to the ways of your own thinking. Submitted to what people are suggesting. He does not want you to live a life submitted to God's word. Because he knows the moment and the time that you get yourself in a place where you become submitted to living a life like God has commanded for us to live. That is the time when the enemy knows he's got a fight on his hands. That's right. yes, sir. See, when the enemy ain't worried about you, it's because the enemy is not concerned because you have not found yourself in a place where you are worthy enough to walk in the authority that was supposed to be bestowed upon you only and through Jesus Christ. On my way to church this morning, he clearly says, I've given my children who are in me a measure of faith. And yet some of them only pick it up when it's feasible for them. They only utilize it when they need something. When this is a way of life, this is something that you have to constantly keep in mind and keep it in your heart and making sure that your life that you're living is a life you're walking by faith and not by sight. Your faith is only going to get stronger and become more developed and sure the more time you spend time in God's word. The more and more time you spend meditating on God's word, the more time you spend on the speaking about God's word, the more time you spend on studying God's word, the more time you're around other people who speak but speak by faith, that's going to sharpen you to get you out of a place to where you're no longer dull to in your senses that you're spiritually sharp and keen to be able to walk in faith because the, the walk of faith is really the spirit of faith. And in order for us to have the spirit of faith, we have to rely upon the Holy Spirit, who is the perfecter of our faith. And without the perfecter of our faith, we're going to remain dull, and we're going to keep our faith is going to be remain small. That is what He has called us to do today, folks. Just rely on Him. You have to totally rely upon Him. I understand the troubles you're going through, but in the midst of the troubles, this is when you need to totally rely upon Him. This is not the time for us to become easily offended. This is not time for us to lose heart and faint within our minds. This is the time for us to stand up as born again believers and begin to live our faith out loud. Because the enemy is walking about to and fro throughout the earth seeking and looking for ways, entry ways into people's lives to find a way to begin to try to dismantle and discredit your witness. He's trying to kill. He's trying to steal. He's trying to destroy. But Jesus said, even though the enemy is on his, on his, his job and his assignment, I've already told you, you've already overcome the works of the enemy in me. And none of the works of the enemy by any means shall harm you. Why? Because when you abide in me, the word abide means you need to remain fixed. You can't be sometime in this. I see day to day there are people that are sometime in the faith. One minute they're in faith, the next minute they're in fear. And when I see fear, it's because I see the flesh in operation instead of seeing faith in operation. So if I'm able to see faith and fear. Don't you think the enemy can see too? Because he's watching. He goes away for a season, but when that, the Bible says when he goes away for a season, it does not mean that he leaves you alone. He watch and observe to see if you're going to consistently stay in character or living a life by faith. Well, I have faith, Pastor. I believe in God. you gotta give me, you got to be a little bit more than that. It can't be just that I believe in God. It's got to be a place to where you not only believe, but you demonstrate in your character that God be for you. Who can be against you? But see, the Lord showed me that there's, 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 there's things that goes on in his children's life that he already factored in in grace. And it's the sins of this life that will easily entangle you if you don't embrace this word. Sins are designed to put you in the bind. The enemy wants to tie up your hands and, and, and fix your feet to where you're immovable. 
not immovable, immovable, not mobile. But he does not want you in a place to where you're moving by faith because he knows the moment you begin to move by faith is the moment you begin to overthrow his kingdom. It's time for us to get rid of the little foxes that are in our life that are spoiling the vine of our fruit. It's time for us to deal with those little foxes. And some of the little foxes that many struggle with is that unbelief. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Meaning the more and more I hear the word of God being preached, well, the more and more I hear the word of God being spoken to me, well, even the more and more time I spend time in the word, it's going to develop me to get me into a place to where my mind and my heart is in a place of faith so that I will be on alert, be guarded, be guarded and vigilant because I know the adversary, the devil, walks about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Just because he can go devour somebody else doesn't mean he can devour me. If you are in a place of confusion this morning, that is, a, that is a fox that is in your life causing confusion. Those foxes are designed to get rid of the fruit that is abounding towards your account. God said the fruit is determined by the fruit of the Spirit, and the first part of the fruit of the Spirit is love. When you find one who lacks love, that's somebody that's dealing with some doubt and unbelief, and there's definitely a fox in their life. They may be the fox that was sent on assignment to come against you. Everybody and everything has a purpose. So I'm not trying to figure out my, my purpose through others. I'm trying to figure out the purpose that God created me to be. And the only way I'm going to find that out, i got to spend time and meditate on the Word. God is saying in order for this confusion to subside, you have to submit your life to me. Because I'm not the God of confusion. He said, I'm the God of peace. In that peace, it's that peace that surpasses all understanding. And it will guard your heart. It will guard your mind. It will help you in the good days. It will help you in the bad days. It will help you in days of uncertainty where you don't even know which way you're going. But I tell you right now, the Holy Spirit knows where you're going. That's why you got to rely upon Him. you got to live in Him. I seen something this week. I seen something in the spirit realm this week that really helped me to understand why people are in the place they're in today. It is all because of decision they have failed to make. It ain't got nothing to do with the devil, even though he's a contributing circumstance to 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 your decision. But at the end of the day, the decision relies relies with you. It relies upon you to make the decision. I said it, it relies upon you making the decision. See, you, you, you got to say within yourself that as for me, I'm not talking about them, I'm talking about as for me. But you don't understand what they're saying about you. I don't care what they're saying about me. As for me and my house, we're going to serve, we're going to live. For the Lord. So you have to make a decision. It can't be some of your life. You're going to live for the Lord. But the other part of your life. You're going to live on how you think you should live. There's all types of evil spirits. That are running rampant in this earth. Just because they run amok in this earth. Does not mean you need to run amok in your life. But you got to have some order in your life. There has to be order, meaning that you have to discipline yourself. Discipline yourself how? Discipline yourself according to what the Word of God says. What did the Word of God say for you to do? You're called to live a life by faith. It says the just shall live by what? It didn't say we should live by fear. It said we should live by faith. When you live a life by faith, there will be people in the world that don't understand why you believe what you believe, but you don't have to convince them that what you believe. You just need to live out loud what you believe, and they'll begin to realize that you're not living life like them. God said there are success and prosperity in me, and then there's failures in the world 
And even though when you're in the world and you experience failure, in me that's being that you're still leaning on your own understanding. Your own understanding is failed knowledge. Your own understanding is what's going to keep you in a place of not having the success you desire, nor the desires of the Lord. When you begin to think on God's word, and make God's word first and final authority in your life, that's when you begin to live. That's when you begin to have wisdom. That's when you begin to demonstrate in power. People will begin to see your faith. Are y'all with me this morning? So God has given us a measure of faith. Say, God, God has, given me has given me a measure of faith. Measure of faith. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Paul says this, he says, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now look what Paul says. Go back up to the very top. It says, this is the grace that was given to me. Say, faith, faith is, grace is grace given to me. You didn't develop your faith. You didn't earn your faith. It was a gift from God. So faith is the grace of God to give you the ability to believe in him. Are y'all with me today? But Paul says, when you're given this grace of God, it puts you in a position not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think. When you think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, that means you're in a place of pride. And we already know pride is the flesh. And the flesh doesn't profit us anything. And the flesh doesn't bring glory to God. So when you're operating in this place of faith, which is the gift called grace, grace was the gift that bestowed faith upon all those who believe in Christ. God gave us the ability to believe him because we, didn't, we weren't able to believe him without faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please him. So God knew you just couldn't believe in him without him not giving you the grace, the ability to give, to have faith in the first place to believe in him. Then he says, but to think soberly. God wants us in a place to where we're thinking, our thinking is sober, to where we're not inebriated with the cares of this life. That we're not bogged down with the deceitfulness of riches. Then we're not bogged down with other things. Why? Because those things will begin to choke the word of God. This mic's going out. Those things will begin to choke the word of God. Are y'all with me today? Yes, sir. It will begin to choke the word. The enemy knows if he can just choke the word, then he can stop me from living life by faith. God wants us in a place God wants us in a place to where we are living life by faith, living life soberly. Sober-mindedness is essential in the body of Christ. When you're sober, you're not worried. When you're sober, you're able to focus. Don't tell somebody to focus and they're inebriated with the cares of this life because they can't, because their mind is perplexed on what they're looking at that is troubling them. The troubleness will not go away until they get their mind stayed on Christ. He says, when we think soberly, according as God has dealt unto every man a measure, the measure of faith, the measure of faith, is determined by God. Amen. The measure of faith is determined by God. But watch this. Every last one of us has been, been given the same measure. Now, in order for us to grow in that measure, we have to develop ourselves in the word of God. That's why you see some people faith a little stronger than others. But God didn't show any type of partiality when he gave us a measure of faith. He gave everybody a measure of faith. Now, what are you doing with your measure of faith is determined on your level of your growth. Spiritual growth is indicative upon what you're doing with the measure of faith you've been given. What are you doing with the measure of faith that you have? 
Are you sitting on your measure of faith? Are you exercising your faith? Is your faith at work? Are you developing your faith? I see people in the spirit realm who don't even operate in faith when it comes to the area of prayer. If you're not praying every day, that's the area of your life that you're not effective in your faith. If you're not seeking the Lord for understanding, knowing that he gives wisdom to all those who seek to know or have understanding on how to live a life by faith. If you're not seeking the Lord and asking for wisdom, that's the area of your life that you're not operating in faith. If you don't know how to love others, that's the area that you're not operating in your faith. If you don't know how to deal with persecution properly and you begin to take it personal and let persecution deal with you, that's an area of faith you haven't grown up in yet. But pastor, you don't know what they've done to me. So they did it to Jesus. Welcome to the club. How we respond is determined on the level, the level of growth that we have with this us. How you respond? Good, sir. You still cussing people out? Right. Come on. You still thinking that cute? Come on. Still thinking that you know I'm a work in progress and using using that as an excuse? Right. Come on. The way you don't want to grow up. Right. How many of y'all know that there's there come a day in time that you have to grow up in what you know? About 20 people caught that. You got to begin to grow up in what you know. I said you got to begin to grow up in what you know. And when you grow up in what you know, people will see that you have grown in what you know. They'll see it. They'll see it so clearly. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 2 and 3. Look what Paul says here. He says, and we pray, and I pray, he said, and pray that we may be, be delivered from wicked and evil people. For not everyone has what? Let me, let, me, let me give you another translation of what that means. It says, and pray that we may be delivered from wicked and evil people. You know who wicked and, and evil people really, you know what, let me tell you who they are. They're the unbelievers. They don't believe in what you believe. Oh, you, you, you want to challenge me on that? I hear you, Lord. Oh, you must think I don't know the word of God. I'm going to show you something. Let me finish verse 3. Put the verse 3 up there quickly. I got another scripture on my head because I got to show some folks some things. See, when you can hear the spirit, you also hear what people are saying within their heart. I ain't wicked. I ain't evil. I'm going to show you that you really, you really, if you're not born again, you wicked. You wicked and you evil. Look what it says right here. It says, but the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. How many of y'all know who the evil one is? Y'all stay with me this morning. Who is the evil one? Talk back to me. The devil, Satan. Yeah, that's who we're talking about, right? Say, say, the, 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 the devil, Satan is the one who is the evil one, right? 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 Because see, the Bible doesn't contradict itself. He says, though we don't fight against flesh and blood. Right? So, Paul was trying to show you that the evil one is in control of those who operate in place of wickedness and evil. Put up 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Let me show you something. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. I'm trying to help you out this morning. Say evil people, evil people are, unbelievers. are unbelievers. Say it again. Evil people, evil people are unbelievers. They're unbelievers. Now watch this. Even though they're evil and they're unbelievers, don't you act like they act. Right, right, right. That's right. You got to show love. 
even to those who despise you. I'm talking to somebody this morning. Well, I don't like them. That's the problem. That's, that's a faith failure right there. Default, default, default. Default you in the flesh. Ain't nothing working in your life. We got to get you over in the spirit to where you come out of a place of error. I ain't never seen that work right when it's an error. Look what he says in verse 4. Paul says, the God of this age has blinded the minds of who? Who the people? So you need to know who's around you. If you sit quiet long enough and listen, you'll know if you got some fake people around you or you're dealing with some unbelievers. He says, the God of this age knows his little G. He's a ruler. He's a prince. You need to keep that prince in his right place. You are king's kid. He should have authority over you. If Satan has authority over you, that means you don't even know your authority. That's right. That's right. You behaving like a pauper when you're supposed to be acting like a king. Yes, he says, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel that displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. Now, where is this light being displayed at? It's been displayed through you who are the believers. If you go back to verse 1, it said if our gospel be hid, it be hid from those who are unbelievers. So stop trying to be secret agent Christians. There's already a 007 and he died in this last verse. It's time for us to come out of the closet. Everything else coming out of the closet. But when you come out of your prayer closet, hopefully that this word has transformed you and we see a renewed mind or a renewed spirit in you and not somebody who's decorating themselves to say, I believe in Jesus, but they're nasty. Right. They mean, they're nasty, and they're wicked. Oh, help me, Lord. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17 says this. It says, from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. We regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we were once regarded in Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone, if anyone, is that you? Is that you? Is, is there anybody in this building in Christ this morning? I still see we got some folks ain't convinced yet. He says, so therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has what? Come. It has come. The old has what? If I'm still seeing the old, you ain't born again. That's right. Don't tell me you're a work in progress and I still see the old you. You manipulative. You steal. You lie. You invoke fear. You bring dissension, discord. Strife. Every time you come around, everybody was at peace until you showed up. Yeah, I'm going at this point. I'm just tired of these folks. Want to disrupt your life. Because their life is in shambles. Because they don't want to submit to God. They don't want to receive Jesus because they still believe they're saying that as a white man doctrine. I beg to differ. It was a man of color. You better know your Bible. I always want to disrupt things. Folks, your discernment ain't off. When they come around and you're uneasy, it's a spirit on me. It ain't the spirit of the Lord. See, God said, I want to get you in a place to where you hear me speak to you. 
But in order for you to get into a place to hear me speak to you, you have to begin to study, to show yourself approved, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing what is it that you know to be the truth. You got to study this thing. Studying this thing is not just memorizing scripture, but becoming the scripture. The old man need to be gone. Oh, yeah, I'm going there this morning. Thank you for the authorization. Because I'm going there this morning. They can't love you like you're supposed to be loved because they don't know love who is God. Go home on that all alone. God is love. If they don't know God, they can only have living love on how to love you. You don't have to teach nobody how to love you. If they're in Christ, they'll know how to love you. They won't tie up your life for 30 years saying you're going to be my eternal boyfriend, girlfriend. No, it's got to be husband, wife up in this thing. Listen, stop giving them the milk. Stop giving them privileges. Stop doing things that you know is against God's will. Start living your life in righteousness and say, I will not accept anything less than what my Father in heaven has designed for me to live in Christ Jesus. Say, I'm living a life in my newness in Christ. You want a new thing to be done, but the new thing has already been done. It's been established in Christ. Put people's lives on hold. Lay away. When you know when you lay away something, you can't afford it. Lay away was created for poor people. You ain't never seen no rich person putting nothing on their way. And people get so happy, oh, my their way was paid by somebody. <laughs> you ain't graduated yet. You still got that proper mentality. Just quit trying to fake it till you make it. Stop buying fake bags. Stop buying fake watches. Stop buying fake clothing. You know Gucci didn't make no masks. Cars up. Go get something brand new. 
Hey, listen. I, 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 I'm trying to help y'all this morning. I'm not saying go out here and do something stupid. Right. If you're going to do something in faith, you need to faith, faith to believe God to give you something new. Stop murmuring and complaining when you get in the car. You don't, the car, the car has feelings too. That's why I don't want to start up this morning. <laughs> this old piece of junk. See, you're speaking against that, that piece of junk. You coming in agreement with his mechanical issues. You gotta realize this thing's spiritual. Lay your hands on your car saying in the name of Jesus, you can start this morning. You gonna take me to church? You, listen, you take me everywhere else, you gonna take me to church? We ain't gonna have no problems tomorrow. Now, 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 it's one thing to pray over something and afford to work, but then there's another thing to use wisdom to go take the thing to the mechanical shop and see what's wrong with it. The light been on for 26 weeks. What's the problem? <laughs> but you want faith. The sign says, get me fixed. Laying hands on the car and you're still cheap. Faith is not foolishness. It's not presumptuous. It's not based on nothing presumptuous. It's based on actual truth. It's God's word. It's what God says. And I believe it on how God says it. And that's it. I don't add nothing to it. I don't take nothing away from it. But we got to begin to walk in our new nature. Because I'm still seeing the old and still around. The Lord told me many years ago, he said, stop helping people who want to cons not consider their ways. Who still live life according to the old way. And always want a handout. God said, I never intend for you to enable them. When you're blessed, you have to be a manager of what the Lord entrusted you with. So what are you doing to measure faith? Are you still enabling people in their, in their bad behavior? You do know as you co-conspiring in about that's agreement with getting with the right? Right. But what are you doing with your measure of faith? John 1.13 says this. It says children born of the natural descent Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of God. Some of you got to become born again. Born again of what? Spirit, soul, and body. Born again in spirit, soul, and body. In order for your soul and your body to be brought under subjection to God's word, you have to renew your mind. Renew your mind, which is also renewing your heart and your spirit. Or your heart and your mind. Are y'all with me today? Yes. Romans 6, 4 says this. It says, we, Paul said, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into the death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may live a new wood. Life. You can only live the new life in Christ. The new life in Christ is the life that's been raised up. Watch this. Christ died by taking upon your sins. He laid down his life. I said he laid down his life. Watch this. Sin didn't kill Jesus. The Jews didn't kill him. He laid down his life for you and I. He took upon the weight of sin. And laid down his life. Because had sin killed Jesus. That means Jesus sinned. Y'all stay with me today. The wages of sin is what? But he laid down his life for you and I. By taking upon our sins. And gave up the ghosts. So that we may be able to live the new life in him. The new life in him, watch this, the new life in him was the life he lived before he died and even the life he lived after he was raised from the dead. Yes. This is the life that we're supposed to live. Yes, 
Say, I'm a new creation. I'm a new creation. Old things. Old things. Has passed away. Now, don't go out here in the parking lot and start messing with somebody. You know, we didn't finish our conversation before we went into church. Did you not hear pastors say the old stuff need to be passed away? No, we need to talk about this stuff. No, the problem is, you had, you had an issue in your heart when you came into church. Only the one stir some things up and trying to steal somebody's joy. Watch people who try to get your focus off the Lord's word after you heard the word of God preach. It have brought you great joy. Well, man, why are you trying to disrupt my vibe? What's wrong with you? I'm trying to think about these things because I know the longer I think about the word of God and meditate on his word, this word is going to develop me. Galatians 6.15 Paul says right here, he says, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision, uncircumcision means anything. What counts is the new creation. We got people going through all type of uh, 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 things to try to make themselves new creations. I'm going to change my name. Still got a stinking attitude. I'm going to move to another state. You're going to take that same stinking attitude to another state only to mess up good people in their new state. And then you're going to think everybody has a problem. i never forget one time I wrote a status about if you change your name, move to a different address, uh, uh, get cosmetic surgery, and steal the same problem going on in your life, the problem is you. Oh, you should have seen the folks try to attack me. I see, see, that's that heart, that old heart. They don't want to change that way. They don't even want to consider that way. See, when you begin to make somebody angry from the truth, that means they're not willing to come out of their lives. They have they had a hold on them. So what counts? What counts? Is the new creation. Is the new creation. Now, in order for us to walk in this place of being being of being, being born again believers, new as a new as a new born again believer, put up Romans fifteen thirty one. Romans fifteen chapter fifteen verse thirty one. I'm gonna show you something. I'm trying to wrap this thing up. As I come into the new year, the Lord told me some, has explained some things to me on what this new year is going to be like. It's going to be an accelerant, blessed year in 2022. <laughs> Listen, it ain't going to take God a long time to do anything. Matter of fact, it ain't taking God a long time period right now to do anything. It's just that we have to grow up in the measure of faith. Amen. You got to grow up in this thing. Amen. Don't just tell me you have faith and you ain't grown up. I don't see no growth. You ever seen somebody every time you look at them, they don't look like they're happy? Right. He said, what's wrong with you? This is my happy face. I don't want to see your angry face because right now you look like you're angry and you're mad. You sure you're not constipated? You probably need a bowel move. You get some form of relief. Naturally and spiritually. I really believe that when you're going through, going through something naturally, it's, it's really it's an indicator of what spiritually is going on in your life. I'm going to say something else. Bad breath ain't always halitosis. <laughs> Dead things smell. Yes, sir. That's coming from your heart. That ain't coming from your mouth. Matter of fact, it's coming from your mouth through your heart. I mean, coming from your mouth through. It's coming from your heart through your mouth. But really. That odor is that, that sinful lifestyle you live. You got on all type of cologne, perfumes, and it's still funky. That's what I call bittersweet. Let me get back in the word today. The Bible call them dead mouth people. There ain't no life in them. Their mouth like a sepulchre. Oh a tomb. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. Yeah. 
They dead. They walking around and walking dead. You know walking dead means that you have no spiritual life. I mean, you're dead to spiritual things. It's not just the God of this world that has your mind and heart blinded. It's just that you're spiritually dead because you're not connected to the vine. Jesus is the vine. Apart from him, you can't do nothing. You can't save yourself without him. In fact, you can't please the Father without him. And I see people every day still trying to please God by doing works, thinking that the works that they do is going to earn their keep and win favor with God. You don't worry about that. Look what Paul says right here in Romans 15, 31. He says, pray that I may be kept safe from the unbelievers. He said, I'm praying, I'm praying that I'll be kept safe. Remember what the unbelievers were earlier? They're wicked and evil people. They're blinded by the God of this world according to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. But even though we're, they, they're blinded by the God of this world, they're, they're under the seduction of the evil one. Remember that? He says, pray that I may be kept safe from the unbelievers in Judea that the, contrib the contribution I take to Jerusalem may be favorably received by the Lord's people there. So Paul is showing you the difference between that there's unbelievers and their believers. But Paul was on guard. If you read this statement, right, he was on guard. He was praying. See, when you pray, you praying for the Lord to keep you alert. Some of y'all lower your guard down just because you're around somebody. I just want to express love. The love of God is not passive. The love of God is a force. It is the power that actually fuels your faith. Jesus said that I ain't coming in peace. I'm coming with a sword. I mean, you want to fight. But you fight the good fight of faith. You don't fight like people who fight in flesh and blood because if you do, you're going to lose. Jesus ain't in that. He's only in things that are in the spirit that he already finished. Are y'all with me today? If, if he finished in the spirit, then that's where you need to be. Stop living life in an unfinished place and you feel frustrated. Get over into the finished works of Christ and you'll begin to see the benefits of living by faith. Romans 10, 17. Paul says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. And the message is heard through the word about Christ. I put that translation up there for a reason. Because we quit to quote the King James Version. Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I put the NIV up there for a reason because it says, consequently, faith comes from hearing the message. About who? Christ. We got all types of redefined messages. They ain't got nothing to do with the word of God. Help redefine my life. Save me. Tell me what's wrong with your life. You're not born again. You're trying to live a productive and successful life without being plugged into the vine. Go home today and break off a branch off a tree in, your, in front of your house and see how long that branch will stay healthy. In a matter of days, that thing will begin to wither and it's going to begin to break. It's going to be easy to, be, to break it. Why? Because it's no longer connected to the source of life. And that's what happens to us when we disconnect our ways from living life in the Lord. People who practice disobedience, them folks ain't connected to the Lord. Stop getting frustrated with folks who don't want to listen to you. You are, your responsibility is to sow the word, do the word, and keep on living your life. Don't be trying to coerce somebody to get their life right. That was a word for somebody to come in. You keep going back over there. You need to get right. And it's frustrating you. Now your life interrupted. Because they already already living a life interrupted. And they interrupting your peace, your joy. Messing with you living by faith. You can't even pray. We're going back going in the prayer closet, praying, crying to the Lord. Lord, I want to. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> the Lord is looking at you like, and what you gonna say? 
I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just tired, Lord. The Lord ain't moved by that. Even though he's touched with the feelings of your environment, but he's been telling you, dry it up, grow up, and begin to live life in faith. He says, when you hear the message, or keep hearing the message, once the message is heard, say it's practice. That's what folks faith is having faith failures. They don't practice what they hear. When you know right and don't do right, it ain't the devil's fault, it's you. Eight people called that. It's your problem. When you give a word of the Lord, I hear you, Lord. All you prophets up in here. All you prophets up in here. When you give the word of God, it ain't your responsibility for them to act upon the word. Your job is done once you release the word. That way you won't be getting frustrated. You call the folk. Did you not hear that word I gave them? Let me tell you something. Ain't your responsibility to get them to do the word. It's their responsibility to do the word. And it is God's responsibility to perform the word. Stop trying to be God. You spooky. Once you release it, it's on them. It ain't on you. I don't get, I don't get perturbed anymore. I release the word and go on by my business. Because it ain't my responsibility to see to it that they do the word. See, some of y'all overstepping your boundaries. You operating outside of the will of God. God didn't tell you to control nobody's life. Where you been? I've been looking for you. Did you not see my text? Did you not see my call? I called you 15 times. No, I had the phone on do not disturb for a reason. Some people are spiritual gnats. But they become spiritual flies when they grow up in that mess. You know that as you stay in mess long enough, you're going to grow in that thing. You're going to become a fruit fly. Y'all ain't catching this this morning. Fruit flies prey on fruit. They praying on your fruit. I know he's saved. I know she's saved. Let me see if I can uh, get them to bless me with some money. I don't want to use my money, but I want to use their money. Come to you every week with the same need. My baby needs a new pair of shoes. How many babies do you have? Oh, I forgot. You don't have no children. Why did I give you money last week? We got to stop allowing people to manipulate us, people. God gave you fruit of the Spirit for a reason. Put it to use. Start walking in it. Amen? Amen. Joshua 1 and 8 and 9. It says, verse 8, it says, keep this book of the law always on your lips. Say, keep it, on your, keep it in your mouth. Yeah. Got to keep this word in your mouth. You know why it's so important to keep it in your mouth? Because you can't put it in your mouth unless it's in your heart. Yeah, that's good. It must be first deposited within your heart in order for it to come out of your lips. We're asking people to speak scripture to us, and they don't even have the heart of God. He says, this book should always, this book of law should always, always on your lips, meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. That word careful means to be guarded, vigilant, alert. Why? He says, be careful to do everything written in it, because obedience is essential. 
since we've been talking about essential and non-essential things in the last year, faith is essential, but obedience is essential too. If you're not obedient, that means you're not living life in faith. He says, then you will be prosperous and successful. Watch this. You must become spiritually mature and prosperous and successful in the world long before tangible results are done. Some of us want the latter part of that in things. Because when we read that, they say, I want prosperity, I want success. But watch this, in order for you to become prosperous and successful, you gotta meditate on the word of God. Because God's order does not change. Matthew 6, 33 says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness on how he, he expects you to conduct yourself on living life here on this earthly plane. Then he'll add things to you. Some of us trying to get things added unto us without living a life by faith. God, just give it to me. God said, I can't give it to you because you're not in faith. God, I don't know what I really want this thing to happen for me right now because you know I got a point to prove. You're asking a miss. Your motives are wrong. You want to spin it on yourself. You want to bring glory to yourself. You want to bring attention on yourself. You want to prove a point to some people who don't even live life by faith. And even if they live life by faith, why are you still trying to prove yourself to them? Then I said for you to need to prove yourself to me in order for you to come into a place where you're obedient unto me in my word. When you're obedient to my word, you'll fall out to me and you won't pay them no mind. Quit letting they say roll control your life. I'm still trying to find out who they are. But look what verse 9 says this. See, when you meditate on this thing, he says, have I not commanded you to be strong? Who'd say I'm weak? My right. family's, oh Lord, I don't know how to make it. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Everywhere I read throughout scripture, when God is with you, you prosper and you succeed. Yes, even under false accusation, you prosper and succeeded. Even when the enemy seemed like it had you outnumbered, you prosper and succeeded. Now see, when the Lord is with you, the Lord will turn your enemy against himself and then destroy each other. Imagine, yes, Lord, I hear you. Thank you. Imagine the Lord opening up your eyes and you see in the spirit how many enemies and devils are against you only to see they turn against each other and destroy each other because they're now thinking they're destroying you. Yes, see, the Lord will take that same confusion that they're trying to get you to buy into and turn that confusion on them and they destroy each other. They'll be beating each other up so much that they think they're beating you. You, you, you come out unscathed. So you might be in a situation right now to where it seems like there's a bunch of chaos going on in your life and it seems like there's a bunch of dust and ruckus happening. But when the dust settles, they'll realize you are saved. Why? Because you won't be moved. You won't be destroyed. The Lord preserves. I said the Lord preserves. We got to begin to think on this word. Think on this word. Let this word renew our mind and our heart. The Lord said, "You have to make a decision on how you're going to live, so you can stop tolerating and accepting less than." When you know your rights and your covenant in the Lord, it comes from understanding in his word and leaning on his spirit to teach you his ways so that you won't be serving to the enemy who's trying to put you in bondage. Did y'all get anything out of this today? Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you today. 
We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Help us, Lord, to walk by faith and not by sight. Help us to come in the knowledge of the measure of faith you dealt unto us, but most of all, help us to build the faith. Help us to build, be built up in faith, to become spiritually strong. You desire for us to desire to send sealed milk of the word of God that we may grow thereby. But we do know that the milk is for the unskillful. But Lord, grow us up to where we can get on the meat of the word. To become matured so we can begin to teach others to become skillful in your word. Father, it is your desire will for all of us to live a life in faith while we're here on this earthly plane. So, Father, I pray today that there's anything that's in the hearts of the minds of your people, uproot those things. Set them free by your anointing. I declare and I decree right now that you begin to declutter their souls and their hearts today. That you'll give them peace and let this peace reign within their hearts and in their minds. Peace in every area of their life as you uproot these things that's been troubling them. To bring them out of a place of double-mindedness. To bring them out of a place of being confused. For though we know you're not the author of confusion. But you are the God of peace. And I speak the peace, the shalom of God. May you prosper them in every way. In their mind, spirit, soul, and their bodies. And in their finances, in their relationship. In everything that is, that is meaningful to their life. Prosper them, Lord. In such a great and mighty way that it brings glory and honor to your name as we humble ourselves before you lord we thank you lord god in due time you will exalt us as we praise you and glorify you for setting us free today it's in jesus mighty name as i pray let the people of god say amen come on y'all give the lord a hand clap of praise As we prepare our hearts and minds as we worship the Lord and our giving. While I was away this week in California, the Lord revealed a revelation to me. And it, and it has to, to do with giving. A leader always have in their heart to give their best at all times to the Lord. And at times it may require you to give all that you have so that you can begin to receive more than enough. Giving to the Lord will never leave you empty handed. Stop allowing your natural mind to kick in to where when you give something you looking at it physically saying, okay, it's physically leaving my hand. But you're not looking at the spiritual uh, implications with it. The spiritual matters of it will bless you beyond what's in your hand. Y'all do know that we have a given project here at NFC for Project 8721. And I, and, I, and I go through the offering from time to time to look to see who gives the Project 8721. Other than myself and my wife, there's only one other person that gives the Project 8721 on a continuous basis. One person. One. And God is saying that if I said this is a vision for this house, would you not be willing to support it with all that you have? Because when you build my house, don't you think I would take care of your house? Don't you think that I would take care of your finances? Don't you think I would take care of everything? Don't you not realize everything that you have? I am the one who gave it. But because you're not honoring me like you should, I'm not going to coerce you to do anything. I need for your heart to be in your giving. Because when your heart is in your giving, that means you're doing it in love. It's not done out of coercion. We don't, we don't, we don't coerce nobody to do anything that their heart 
is not willing to give. You should be willing to give to God your best every time because imagine if everything in your life right now, and I'm not speaking this on nobody's life, whether you're online or you're in the business, in the, in the building. Imagine everything in your life right now was wiped away and you don't have no means. What would you depend on? Who would you depend on? The what to be the money that you might have your dependency in or on. And who may be you that you depend upon yourself and not the Lord. You only include the Lord in when you think it's time for him to be included in. God says, son, my children have not even tapped into the understanding of the treasures in heaven. They still live in a life attached to what they physically have and not even accessing the treasures of heaven. When you support me in the earth, heaven gets involved in the earth in your life and begin to start adding things to your life, creating streams. Streams. Right now you might only have one stream. The Lord's trying to get to at least four to five streams. But he can't add those streams to you if you're not doing right by what he's entrusted you with. We look at the talent, the parable of the talents over in Matthew 25, when he dealt unto every man a, a, a talent according to their faith. He wanted to see if they're really going to work their faith. He gave five, he gave two, he gave one. He wanted to see, are you really going to invest the talent to grow the talent to where the talent will be more than what I've given you? Because when I return back, I don't just want to receive back what I've given you. I want to see that you really truly increase it and manage it to increase on my return. Because if you notice that that, that, that that parable in the Bible, that when he came back, the five had five more. The two had two more. But it was that one that wicked and slowful servant. And that's what happened. When you are wicked and you are slowful, that means you're not applying the principles that God has set out for you to begin into a place of increase. When you still are not tithing because you're still thinking that, oh, it's New Testament, we don't tithe. You need to really know your Bible. Because we got all type of erroneous teachings out here about tithes and offerings. When Jesus commended the tithing. The tithing was done 400 years before the law was ever enacted. You know your Bible. Abraham tithed. And if I'm supposed to do anything like Abraham, I'm supposed to imitate what Abraham did. I mean, I give my all to God. We're not in the ceremonial laws anymore. And God is not going to put your arm in the chicken wing and he's going to try to curse you. But he's telling you that the curse that's going to come upon you is far worse than what you think that you're keeping. The enemy wants to deplete you. He wants to keep you in a place of deficit. God is a God of increase. He wants you in a place of more than enough. That's why he says when you give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom. There are people right now on standby waiting on the word of the Lord to pour into your life. To confer blessings on you. Because they understand Genesis 12 too. That we're called to be blessed, to be a blessing. It's not meant for us to store all this stuff for ourselves and keep it for ourselves. It's meant for us to help other people. Help advance the gospel. Go ye throughout the world and preach the gospel to every living creature. It costs money. And it's not cheap. And so God gave means unto his children to support his work in the earth. Because he says, when you support my work in the earth, which is spiritual, it requires spiritual responsibility of me to come into place to where I begin to assist you. To accomplish everything that I have set forth and planned as far as concerning your life. This ground here at NFC is good ground. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be up here. None of you would be here. This building wouldn't be in existence. We'd probably be somewhere in somebody's house right now. And I ain't clowning nobody who have a house ministry. Don't, 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 don't take it the wrong way because I hear that in the spirit too. There's nothing wrong with a, a, a church in the house. That's the way most of them start out anyway. Before they come into a building. But God is saying today that we need to really search within our heart and say, Lord, have I really given anything to you lately? Can you honestly and badly say, yes, you've done anything for the Lord other than, than, than do external work? Did you really worship the Lord any time this year in your giving? Since we get ready to come to the close of the end of the year in the next month, 
Because this blood is almost gone. These sin will be here. Have you really worshipped the Lord? Did you give God anything this year that you could say was a sacrifice? But you want the Almighty to sacrifice on your behalf, but you won't sacrifice on His behalf. I will not allow the love of money or materialism to control my life. Because the moment you allow the love of money and materialism to control your life, that's the moment you fail. So as we worship the Lord in our giving, you can text the give. Text the give of the Spirit app through Givelify at 1833. You just text the word give to 1833-488-6717. And it'll reply back to your text message, a secure response. You can give through through Tithely to this ministry. You can give by way if you have the Givelify app. You can also mail it. You can give me physically in the offering in this service. But you also can give by cash app. You can give if you want to give. The choice is yours. But I'm going to say this as I get ready to close. If you're going to give, expect a return. Expect a return. And, and watch this. Expect a bountiful return because you're going to give bountifully. Now, if you give it sparingly, expect a, spare, a sparingly return. I can't bless a sparingly offering greater than sparingly return. I can only bless a bountiful offering if it's a bountiful return. But I believe that you're giving out of the abundance of your heart. I believe that you're giving today and you're going to give from this day forward from the abundance of your heart. I'm going to give God my very best because had it not been for the Lord, I wouldn't be in the position I'm in today. The Lord has made my life completely sound on every plane and I'm grateful and thankful that he's, he, he's blessed me and so I'm going to make sure that I honor him every way I can. I'm not going to shortchange God. So let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, I bless this offering that we're receiving today. I thank you, Lord God, that your word would not return unto you, Lord. And Father, as we worship, Lord, Lord, you today in our giving, I bless this offering. I bless the lives of your people. I bless their businesses. I bless the, the ones who have the initial plans in place. Help them, Lord God, to give them the resources needed to get their businesses off the ground. For Lord, I believe that this is an entrepreneurship ministry. I thank you, Lord God, for the witty invention and ideas that you're blessing into the hearts of your children on the day. But Lord, it is your desire, will, that we prosper in every way we can, that it brings glory to you because you take prosperity in your people as I bless this offer right now, the Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, y'all. Let's worship the Lord. I give Well, my online church, y'all know I love you. May the Lord bless you. May he continue to keep you. Continue to walk by faith not by sight. Remember this, Jesus is Lord. I love you. God bless you. Have a great week.